Today we're going to create our DAX measures without writing any code. Not one or two at a time, but a whole slew of them all in one go. We're going to use TMDL to do this. If you're not sure what that is, I just did a video a couple weeks ago that has more of a backstory. In that one, we used AI to write measure descriptions and comments into our existing measures. Today we're going to create the measures. Big brain thinking here, but why not both? By the way, I heard somebody pronounce this Timdl instead of TMDL the other day, and I kind of like that, so I'm going to go with it. So for a little bit of backstory, I pulled my YouTube analytics data into Power BI yesterday, and I was like, well, I need to create a bunch of really simple measures like count of impressions, count of views, views divided by impressions, and that's kind of boring. So I was thinking maybe this TMDL AI combination could create those for me, and it worked way better than I expected it to. So I'm going to walk you through how this works. Um, first things first, if you haven't seen the other video, the first thing you need to do is turn on Timdl. So that's under the file menu, options and settings, options, and then under preview features, turn on Timdl view down at the bottom here. Check the box, click OK. You'll probably have to restart Power BI. What that's going to do is let us send AI some context about our model. And there's a few things you need to be aware of in order for this to work well. So number one, there's limits on how much context you can give AI and have it still work. So there's several tools that you can use that can let it take in more information like github copilot or cursor the problem with those that i've found is that while it won't refuse to work with really large amounts of context it will just make stuff up if it's given too much information so for example i clicked on timdl view on the left hand side here in power bi and in here there's a tab called model on the far right and what that does is if you drag and drop your semantic model into the timdl view it gives you all of the code for your model this is really in an ideal world what we would want to use to have a I generate our measures. The problem is this is too big. So you'll see, I scroll through here, it's like over a thousand lines. I'm going to show you what happens when you try and use this much context so that you have an idea. But if I copy this, I'm going to use GitHub Copilot first. So I actually started a trial of the paid version of this just to see if it was any better. And well, yes, it is. Um, the reason why the paid version of GitHub Copilot is better is because you can select the model that it uses from the newer models. So for example, this drop down here has Claude 3.7 Sonnet, which is as of the time of this video, one of the best models that you can use. The free version won't let you use this. You'll be downgraded to 3.5. So we're going to paste all of that model information into a new tab in GitHub Copilot and then prompt it based off of the current file over here. So here's the prompt I'm working with. Basically, here's my model info. Give me some Timdl code to create measures for all of the key metrics that you think would be useful for this data set. So because it has all of your model information in there, it knows what your columns are. It knows generally what your model is about, although it doesn't have the actual data. It can kind of guess what would be useful. And so it came up with some stuff that I wouldn't have thought of when I had it generate measures. So I would try both telling it what the goal of your report is so that it's more relevant, but also try not doing that and just see what you get because it's really interesting to come up with new things to measure. So I tell it not to to include code comments or organize the measures into groups because when I had it do this the first time, it tried to do that and that kind of broke things a little bit. And I tell it to make friendly names for the measures. So use spaces between the words. Power BI can handle that. It's easier to read as a human than you don't have to rename things in every visual to be more friendly. The indentation on this code is important. So I'm telling it to keep that. And you can give it some information about how you want it to format things. So if you always format your whole numbers with a comma, tell it that it can do that all at once. If you never want to show more than one decimal place, you can tell it that and it'll include that information in the measures. So I say, here's an example, and then we need to give it an example. So back in Power BI, if I open a new tab here, if I drag just one measure, so you have to create at least one measure here for this, it can be anything, but drag and drop that onto your screen. We're going to take out this lineage tag because we don't want Copilot to be creating lineage tags for these things. They get automatically created when the measures are created. So we take that line out, that's important, and then copy this and paste it into our example over here and hit send. So while it's generating, I want to talk about some things that are important when you're using this. So obviously you want your column titles and things to be somewhat descriptive. So if you have as your primary field that you're measuring in your data model, a column called value, it's not going to know what to do with that. So give things good names before you start. And what I did here by giving it the whole model is actually not what you want to do. I just want to show you how it doesn't really handle that well first. So if we take this code that it created and paste that back into Power BI, I'm going to make another new tab here and paste 
paste and come back to this table view so I can see the measures. So if I apply this, you'll see that a lot of these have errors. This kind of varies. The first time I did it, about half of them errored out. This time looks like it did a little bit better. But these things are erroring out not because they're bad code necessarily, but because the fields that it's referencing don't exist. So it's making up column titles for the measures. That's because it's got too much information. It can't use all of the information that we're giving it. So I like to pick one or two tables at a time to do. So let me show you how that works. I need to delete these first because it can't create measures that already exist. So make sure to review the code that it gives you before you apply it. Because if there's anything that has the same name of something else that already exists, it'll just fail with a generic error. So double check that. I'm going to delete all of those. So back in the Tyndall view, what we want to do is just give it the tables that we want to make measures for. So I would do one or two tables at a time, particularly if they're large tables or have a lot of query transformations on them. So for me, most of my interesting fields are on this metrics all table. So I'm going to drag this in here. If you're using two tables, you can include relationship info. I'm only using one here, but you can also drag the relationships over here. This is much shorter. I'm going to copy and paste this back into GitHub Copilot and rerun that prompt. You don't need GitHub Copilot to do this, by the way. You can do it in the browser version of your LLM of choice. When you do it that way, it really helps to have a paid model because there's character limits on the older models that are pretty restrictive. So back over to VS Code, which is where GitHub Copilot is. I'm going to replace what we had before for that model Timdle with our table Timdle. There's probably a regenerate button in here somewhere, but I couldn't find it. So I'm just going to copy and paste our prompt from earlier. I'm going to start a new chat so it doesn't get confused. So same exact prompt as before and send. And we're going to copy this output and paste it back into Power BI and see what it does. We're going to apply this. Now what? So it looks like it used creative license on my table name. So my table name isn't called measures. It's called asterisk measures. So I think that's its problem. Try again. No. no. There's also supposed to be the word ref here. So that was a little bit of a fail. I don't know if that's something to do with GitHub Copilot specifically or not, but I haven't had the browser version of Claude do that to me ever. I'm going to show you that method in a second, but let's try and apply this again. Okay, that worked. So make a special note of where it's trying to put your measures because it'll sometimes decide to put them somewhere where you don't want them. So looking at these measures, if I come back here, they look pretty decent. So for example, shares per view, the number of shares divided by the number of views, that makes sense. Most of these make sense. The ones you want to watch out for, I've noticed that the averages, so this is doing an average of average view duration, and you can't really average averages like that because you lose some of the context there. Most of the rest of these are fairly decent when I click through them. I don't have a super enormously complex model to try this on, so if anybody has some Thing that is particularly nuanced. I'd be interested to hear how that goes for you. So next, I want to try running this through Claude in the web browser because that's honestly how I prefer to use it right now. Maybe I'm just change resistant. I don't know, but I'm going to copy and paste our prompt and then go down a couple lines and paste our Power BI table Timdle. So when you bulk paste a whole bunch of text, it usually attaches it and we hit send. So I used to be a chat GPT person, by the way, and honestly, Claude's been doing it better for me lately. So I'm kind of a Claude convert. GPT has started putting emojis all over the place every time it responds to everything and it kind of drives me nuts. So that's not the only reason, but I'm going to copy this and then paste it back into Power BI and see what happens. So I already deleted all my measures from earlier. Let's do one more script, paste it in and apply. And it looks like it got most everything except for engagement rate has an issue. What's the issue with this? It's referencing a measure that it didn't create. I guess we can just do some comments here. So one out of what is this 20 or so measures isn't too bad, but do make sure to go through and double check each of those measures to make sure that they are accurate before you are going to publish a report. Also, another disclaimer, make sure to follow your organization's policies on AI and only use the models that are approved by your organization. So this is pretty cool. I'll probably be using it as sort of a baseline when I start new models, but you could also use it to help you write individual specific trickier measures, I would guess, as long as the LLM has some context about what your columns are called, what your relationships are in your tables. It should be able to do a lot better job than it has in the past when it didn't have all of that information. Presumably, this is going to get built into Copilot in Power BI at some point. At least that's my guess. I don't have any official information on that, so don't quote me on it, but they're putting Copilot in everything, right? So it's coming, I'm sure. I'm going to put a link to the other Timdall video on adding your measure descriptions and comments on the end screen here. So thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.